Scott Gardner. I'm the Vice President of the Embedded Vision Alliance. I'm here with Jeff Beer, who's the President and Co-Founder of Berkeley Design Technology. And we're here to find out why did BDTI bet on Embedded Vision. But first, Jeff, a lot of people may not have heard of BDTI, so why don't you go ahead and explain what you guys do and how long you've been around. Sure. Well, BDTI uh, was founded in 1991. We're an independent technology analysis and engineering services company, and we focus on embedded digital signal processing applications, things like audio, wireless communications, and video. So your background has been in DSP, so what's changed? Why this big focus now on embedded vision? Well, we've seen successive waves of digital signal processing enabled technology over the last 20 years that we've been in this, in this business. And We've come to believe in the last year or two that embedded computer vision is going to be the next big wave. It's going to be a technology that's going to be deployed in a very wide range of applications, much the way that digital wireless communications has been over the last 10 years. Well, then, so what specifically are you seeing that you believe is the basis for embedded vision all of a sudden having this big impact in the market? Well. Embedded vision is, I think there's two sides of it. There's the what's the motivation and there's the what's the capability. The, the motivation comes from the fact that the visual environment is extre an extremely rich source of information. Right? As, as humans, we get an enormous amount of, of, of information and insight from what we see. Um, machines also can get that insight, but it's extraordinarily computationally costly to do so. It requires just an extraordinary amount of computation power to look at a, a scene and have uh, a, a, a machine, a set of algorithms, extract meaning from what's going on. The thing that is enabled, that we think is enabling embedded vision really to take off is that we're now at the point where you can get that amount of processing power in a cost and a power consumption and a size that are suitable for widespread deployment. So that's probably answering the question I had because, as we know, computer vision's been around for decades. It's been used in universities and government research. So, so what's happened now? Why are things changing today that you think we really need to be out there pushing embedded vision? Well, I don't think we need to push it. I think it's going to explode on its own. And I think the reason for that is there are so many just completely compelling applications. You think about, um, for example, in the United States, the two leading causes of childhood accidental death are automobile accidents and drowning. Well, two of the most compelling applications for embedded vision are vision-based driver assist systems in cars that really can help reduce the frequency of accidents and swimming pool safety systems where computer vision is used to watch what's happening inside a swimming pool and help prevent drowning. With an automatic alert if somebody were to be yeah. in trouble. Yeah, okay. and uh, these are things that people obviously are willing to pay money for. But there's a practical limit, right? You, you spend $20,000 on a car, you're not going to spend $10,000 on safety features, right? It has to be a modest incremental cost. You might spend $20,000 putting in a pool, you're not going to spend another $20,000 on a, on a safety system. We're, we're now getting to the point where all of those sophisticated algorithms that have been developed in universities and other research institutes over the last three decades of computer vision research can be implemented in a practical way for a reasonable price because we now have processors that are capable of delivering that amount of processing power at reasonable price points. So, Jeff, I'm surprised you haven't already mentioned it, but what about the Microsoft Connect? I mean, this is one of the most successful examples of embedded vision. Yeah, I think the Microsoft Connect, we're going to look back in 10 years and say that was, that was the, the turning point. That's, that marks when computer vision went from being a exotic research technology to being mainstream. Microsoft has sold something like 10 million units of Connect in the first three months That's since amazing. they put it yes. on the market. And What's even more amazing is that people are finding all kinds of creative ways to use it, most of which I'm sure Microsoft never envisioned, using it for um, creating real-time uh, 3D maps of, of interior spaces in a building, for example. 
And, um, and I think the Kinect is a great example. Microsoft sells that for $150, and it works. So to be able to deploy a robust computer vision system for $150, um, it starts to inspire you to think, well, what could I do in my product? Maybe I'm making some kind of medical equipment. Maybe I'm in the automotive industry. Maybe I'm in the consumer electronics industry. If Microsoft can do that and sell it for $150, what could I do that would be a modest increase in the cost, would, would bring a modest increase in the cost of my system, but yield the kinds of compelling capabilities that it connect Microsoft's this product to the Xbox. Well, most of our audience are system designers doing embedded systems. So, it, from their perspective, what do you think the challenges are going to be for a designer wanting to put embedded vision in their product? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Um, because it's the early days of embedded computer vision, although the algorithms are, uh, in many cases, well understood, the, the way of building system, techniques for building systems are not well understood, they're not well established. Much like the early days of digital wireless communications, right. we had the algorithms, people knew how to do trellis coding and things like this, but how to build that and get a product to market quickly in a cost effective, energy efficient form, that's what was missing. And that's also what's missing in, in embedded computer vision by and large now. There are a few applications that are becoming pretty mature, like the driver assist applications, like smart surveillance cameras, where there are pretty robust solutions out there. If you wanted to incorporate that kind of capability into your product, you could get pretty much a turnkey solution. But for the thousands and thousands of other applications, which can hugely benefit from embedding vision, there is no off-the-shelf solution. And so I think the key challenge is going to be, okay, well, there are algorithms, there are processors. I can see that if I can make this all work within my, my power and size and space uh, and power and size and uh, price budget, then I can uh, really have a compelling product. But how do I get from there to there? How do I get from, okay, con conceptually the algorithms are there, the processors are there too. Now I've got a robust solution that meets my size, power, and price constraints. That kind of practical uh, know-how, design techniques, off-the-shelf, software components, and so on, that's what's, uh, what's really missing today. So BDTI was the, the driving force for creating the Embedded Vision Alliance. So, so what are your plans? What do you think that BDTI is going to be able to do through the Embedded Vision Alliance to help the system designers? Well, we're really excited about the possibilities for Embedded Vision technologies, you can probably tell. And we want to help make this happen. It's going to take many people and many companies and lots of resources to, to really move this forward. But we think that we can make a contribution by helping to bring together a lot of that practical know-how, um, helping system designers, first of all, um, helping them imagine what's possible with the technology and understand what is, as a practical matter, what can be done, yeah. and then helping them get the practical know-how that they need. What, where, where do I find the right algorithms? What sorts of tools should I use? What sort of processor should I use? What should my system architecture look like? That, that kind of, of practical know-how is what we plan to deliver through the Embedded Vision Alliance to help system designers get from point A, an idea, here's what I can do with Embedded Vision in my system, to point B, here's my system ready to ship. That's excellent. Um, what I probably want to find out from you now is, I mean, you're an analyst. You've been covering the industry. You've seen all the trends. You're obviously making a huge bet in the embedded vision world. So just look out five years. What do you believe is going to become an embedded vision? You say, today we've got the Connect and all these new products. What is going to be in the future? Well, I think, I don't know whether it's going to take you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, but I'm very confident that we're going to see embedded vision become ubiquitous technology. It, in, in, in the same way that we're starting to see digital wireless connectivity become ubiquitous, where our electric meter has digital wireless connectivity, our thermostat, our cell phones have, you know, five different wireless transceivers in them, our laptops have multiple transceivers, our media players, et cetera, to everything's becoming wirelessly connected. And not just because we can, but rather because there's real value to doing that. It enables new capabilities. It enables 
better efficiency, better reliability, or what have you. I think we're going to see a very similar phenomenon with embedded vision. People are going to start to see, oh, by putting embedded vision in this kind of product, I can gain this. By putting it in this kind of product, I can gain this. And I think it's really going to proliferate. People sometimes have asked me, well, isn't this kind of like speech recognition? Speech recognition and embedded vision are related in that they both involve using automated techniques to derive meaning from some sort of signal stream. In the speech recognition case, it's an audio speech stream. In the computer vision case, it's a, obviously it's a video stream. And, and since they do seem somewhat similar in that conceptual sense, and speech recognition hasn't become a ubiquitous technology, why do we think embedded vision is going to become ubiquitous? Well, I think they are similar conceptually, but there's one key difference. Speech recognition only works where you have a person speaking into a microphone. And embedded vision, on the other hand, can work anywhere you can point a camera. Right? So there's only a limited number of places where you can have a pe person talking into a microphone. Right. Also, there can't be a huge amount of ambient noise, right? because that makes it mm -hmm. hard to do reliable speech recognition. But embedded vision can work anywhere you can point a camera. And so I think there are orders of magnitude more places where it makes sense to deploy vision compared to where it makes sense to deploy speech recognition. You, th you look at, for example, just the number of surveillance cameras that are being deployed in cities, in stores, in uh, casinos, and so on. Thousands and thousands of cameras. It's not humanly possible There's not enough humans monitor. to see all of those video feeds. Yeah, and so. a lot of times with surveillance today, it's an after-the-fact technology. After the bank has been robbed, right, then we go and we, we hope to identify the thief and find him and, and, and catch him. Well, what about identifying, hey, right now the bank is being robbed, let's put in a call you know, to the police, let's zoom in on the guy's face, try and get identifying characteristics. Um, there are so many places where there are cameras today where by adding vision capabilities, we can make those cameras so much more valuable. Anticipate a problem, or at least identify it in real time when it's happening, as opposed to, well, after the fact, we got a video that shows that you know, somebody robbed the bank. So I think embedded vision is going to become a really ubiquitous technology, and we hope with the Embedded Vision Alliance to, to help that happen by helping system designers get some of the practical know-how that they need to build embedded vision into their systems. Okay, that's excellent. That's probably all the time we have uh, on this topic, but I encourage everybody to come to the website, embedded-vision.com, and can, we'll continue the conversation there. Thank you very much.